Hey there, welcome to One Take, powered by backers. Right? No, 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 no judging. Yeah. No judging. The millennials are really changing that. That uh, is charm. No. <laughs> All success begins with desire. I feel like I'm on fire right now. OMG, baby. Hey there, welcome to One Take, powered by backers, Justin Fox, Shay Tuff. Shay, thank you very much for joining me on the show today. Awesome, thanks. I'm super excited to have a chat and you're, you're, see where it goes. Awesome, awesome. So you're, you're a first time entrepreneur. So we'll, we're gonna dive right into that and talk a little bit about that. Um, but before we do that, I'll, I'll get into your bio. So um, you homeschooled yourself through high school. So that's interesting. Um, love to talk a little bit about that. Spent three years traveling, volunteering and fundraising uh, for infirmary funds in Kenyan public school before university. Um, you now have a BSc in genetics uh, from Western, so UWO. Um, you got accepted and deferred med school to, pers to pursue private genetic research. Um, you have a postgraduate, post I can't even speak today, postgraduate <laughs> diploma in clinical trials management. A pharma and biotech consultant for almost three years. Um, you quit the corporate clinical trials job to go full time as an entrepreneur for FCSB, which is the Forest City Synbio Synbio, right? That's the B part. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And we, yeah, I, we had your we had your partner on uh, Samir about a week or so ago. So his his will be out. So. Shay, thank you very much for joining me today. Thanks. I mean, I feel like that bio is so long-winded. It's it's really just done some school, had some had some jobs, <laughs> had some jobs, <laughs> Nothing, traveled a little bit. Crazy. Yeah, no, that's. I mean, yeah. that's at, at a young age. That's a that's a pretty impressive. So you so let's 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 unpack a little bit of this. So, I mean, obviously, homeschooled. This is before COVID. We're talking, mm -hmm. you know. So what what drove you? to homeschool yourself. I, I realize, I'll throw this out there, both from Scarborough, both mm -hmm. very close in, in where we grew up, um, slightly different timelines in the sense I was more in the 90s, I guess, 80s and 90s, but um, very close to where, you know, the Bluffs area. Um, what drove you to homeschool yourself, you know, you know yeah. pre-COVID, I guess? Yeah, it was... Um... It was kind of a decision based on I, when I look back on it now, it was very much like probably an entrepreneurial minded decision where I was like, I just want to do this myself. Right. I just wanted to get through it as fast as I can and move on to the next thing. And I felt like school and where, um, yeah, like the time consuming aspect of sitting in a classroom and learning something just because the teacher is it's mandated in a, in a certain way right. was, um, I wasn't loving it. So I kind of was like, is there a way for me to teach myself, learn as much as possible as I can and go through the curriculum at my own pace? And okay. that's kind of uh, where that came from. And I wanted to do other things at the same time. And I was like eight hours a day in a classroom. It's going to be, it's, it's, a, it's not productive. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's, I basically. That's did, interesting um, that at, at a young age, you know, in your teens, you were already sort of thinking sort of in that direction. I, I mean, first personally, I don't even know where I would have began to even go down the road. Like we're talking, like we're like, I mean, we're obviously talking in Canada, public school system, you know, were there materials? Like, how did you go mm -hmm. about even figuring out like what you needed to do to get? Yeah. So it, your, it yeah. was, it was structured in some way. So I went through okay. a program called the independent learning center okay. and ILC. And so it's still the, um, TDSB curriculum okay. and you still have like course materials, but it's kind of, you're, you're not supposed to use it to get through all of high school. Like you're not supposed to, it's not for homeschooling. It's just typically for like mature students who need one more course to get right. through, like to get their diploma or something like that. And I was just like, I feel like I could take all of these courses and have enough to graduate if I do it all online. Right, right. <laughs> like, okay. so it was basically kind of like taking a university online class where you get all your materials. There's no lectures or anything like there's no teacher, but you get all your materials. You just read it, read it through kind of, like I said, teach yourself from reading a textbook, I guess. Right. And then answer questions, send them back and you get a mark. Do you, do you find, so I guess, was there any sort of interactivity at all or is just basically 100% on your own? 100% on your own. And there was no deadlines. It's like you sign up for one course. So like grade 12 English and you have 10 months to complete it. 
Okay. So it's like, you can do as many, as little or as much as you want at a time. So I think I finished like most of my high school courses in the span of like three weeks, because wow. like I would do one course at a time and I would just completely double down and do like just chemistry for, for three weeks, Sorry, do chemistry no for three weeks and then be done. Yeah. So the, so, okay. So the, that's interesting. So did you, okay. Grade nine, did you go to school for grade nine? Like when did you start the homeschooling? Yeah, I went to school for grade nine regularly, and okay. then grade ten I switched. I was just like, nope, not not for me. <laughs> wow, that's that's. I mean, that's obviously right away. I see that, like you said, that's the the beginning of your entrepreneurial journey. It's kind of like mm -hmm. I can do this, but on my own in a more time efficient, effective manner. Um, very interesting. So, okay, so you then spent three years traveling before you went to university. What was what was that like? So obviously, okay, let me, before I get to that, you finished in three years. So you did grade nine. Were, did OACs exist for you? No, you were, mm -hmm. you're, yeah. so that it would have been just grade 12, right? Was sort of the end. Yeah. And then you're done. Mm -hmm. And then you decided to go travel. Did you finish quicker than you would have normally, or were you, was it the full three years? Um, no, I finished over the right up uh, in four years. So like, okay. well, I guess high school in four years. Right. Okay. So I just did. I guess the whole point for me at that time was just to, once I finished a course, I would just like work or do do like volunteering or something that's sped up my free time. Right. Um, but yeah, I still did it in four years. Okay. So it wasn't expedited or anything. So then you're done, you went traveling for three years. Uh, what what ex describe that sort of experience? Yeah, it was, interesting i kind of did it backwards than most people do it it's like you go to university and then you, then you go travel you, you take you take time off you travel around the world and you right. you <laughs> once you already have your degree and i kind of did it backwards where i traveled first and then went to school okay. um but for me like it mainly was kenya and being there so i traveled um i was there for a while and that was mainly there's an amazing organization called hope for help and okay. it was i met these two people playing basketball and they they were like we we basically support a tiny 40 kid orphanage school and they turned it into a 1200 kid public school just these two sisters wow. um but then their their story was amazing i was like can i come with you <laughs> would this be okay if i just come with you um so i didn't quite travel the world i would say i only went right. to a few different places um but yeah the time that i spent there was I feel like kind of was the driving force behind a lot of what I do now, I guess, is, is seeing the kids interacting, just basically right. just getting different perspectives on life. I was, yeah. I think that kind of now drives what I, a lot of what I do to just like make the world a better place. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's great to obviously get out from sort of the, you know, the Canadian bubble of you know, what, what the, world we, the world we live in and see exactly see the way the rest of the world lives right and the, and the rest of the world sort of thinks and maybe get those different perspectives. So that's awesome. So you, so you're already like, in the first sort of seven years of your traditional, what everyone else has done, you know, traditional high school, gone to class, maybe gone to university, you've homeschooled yourself and now traveled, you know, to not the world, but traveled to places that most people mm -hmm. will never ever get to right and mm -hmm. experience things that no one's you know most people will never experience and that's kind of like you said the driving force of what you do now so you got into genetics um with or at you uh western right uwo um so that yeah. so i mean that's kind of most people go to schools so i don't we don't need to really talk too much about school but so now you're out of genetics you, you've you've graduated bsc um med school you know and then sort of like other options describe yeah. just give me sort of like cole's notes on how that kind of process went to then lead you into um obviously forest city and and sort of where you're at now and sort of what we're working on together you know trying to help you guys get off you know from a funding side and and what you're doing there so give us sort of like that that version of how how the graduation to fcsb you know path was was yeah. taken 
yeah oh gosh <laughs> it's like thinking about making decisions of what I did back then is so like stressful still thinking about like what where my headspace was at the time of being right. like do I go to med school do I not but yeah I graduated all through university all I wanted to do was become a doctor and then okay. I got in and at the same time also got an opportunity to pursue some like like my own intellectual property creation surrounding um, genetic sequencing. Okay. So it was, they were, they were working on kind of a more machine learning um, decision tree type of, I mean, it's like convolutional neural networks, but that's kind of the, the overarching theme of kind of like genetic sequencing, just like entrepreneurship in a way is, is what I was offered. And so I decided, I was like, do I want to spend four years in devoting my life to becoming a doctor or do I want to spend time doing something that uh, I can make a difference in in a different way okay. uh, so that's kind of where my mindset was and I ended up deferring med school so not going to med school and I kind of always knew that I didn't want to be um, a practicing doctor I would have ended right. up doing research anyways so right. I was like okay I don't want to it's that's kind of where I was like I should give somebody else the opportunity who's really going to like take advantage of being a doctor their entire life so anyway so Deferred med school, did some private genetics research, and then basically had always already been in pharma, biotech consulting. I was really fortunate to work with a company called Aeroscience um, throughout undergrad as well. So I was already working with them and it was all pharma driven. And my boss is an amazing woman and she, uh, Karen Sora, and she's like, there's a better way to, to do drug development. There's a more collaborative, there's a more, there's a better, version of how pharma should be made and I want to be the one to like support that initiative right. moving forward so yeah I got into pharma from from her and then decided to go back to school just for clinical trials management to kind of support where I was at the time so I was already in pharma and I was like I should probably get a more in-depth educational background in order to support my already working working in the industry right so I went back to school and then for four city symbio it was kind of a whimsical way that I got involved with Forest City Symbio. It was like right place, right time. I was finishing school. Um, I was still working at Aeroscience and Samir and I, uh, my co-founder Samir, he was, we were working on a project together that throughout undergrad that was synthetic biology based and it was the International Genetically Engineered Machine Team and that's where we met. And it was okay. kind of like, as I was finish, finishing up school, he came to me and was like, there's a lot more that Symbio has to offer here. And I want to like, bring a lot more of the ideas that we're working on in in an academic setting to the right. rest of the world and so he it was just like right place right time for me like finishing school and i was like this sounds awesome like I, i'll volunteer I, I love volunteering anyways and i was like right. this is something i could get interested in and like a month in i remember my mom being like are you sure you have the capacity to take on another thing right now and like a month in she's like you're gonna get too invested like slow down <laughs> this is gonna take over your life and I was like yeah no like I'll be fine it's okay it's just a volunteer role and then boom I was like two months in working on it every second that I had like working two jobs still night times would be all for a city symbol and I was like okay this is probably something that I'm willing to develop my life to <laughs> yeah okay so so you saw that passion that you had sort of given it some time and you acquired the passion or you had the passion for it so so give me some timelines what like what, what are we talking maybe a year or two ago or when was when was it sort of the timeline for when you sort of jumped in to fcsb and and sort yeah. of now i jumped into four city symbio about a year ago about so just ago? over a year ago and we okay. were all volunteers and then from there it like the evolution of the company itself kind of um, led its hand to becoming, taking on like a leadership role and becoming, uh, it was kind of like Samir and I being like, if no one's going to do this, if the team's not going to do this, if volunteers don't have the capacity to put in as much time, like it's really only us two. So it led itself into probably I'd say September. September was when we went for like a for-profit model with our business structure. And we're like, okay. we're going to have to devote a lot more hours to this and become full-time. Right. So, okay, so just so everyone, I mean, they'll probably see Samir's video um, and then they can watch this sort of in, maybe in sequences like part one, part two. But can we talked a lot about what sort of syn bio was and synthetic biology and, and genetics with Samir. I, I'd, I'd really like to understand from your perspective, we don't, you know, I, I'd love to talk a little bit about the science and stuff as well, but um, you mentioned sort of that you guys were involved on the, the science side obviously. And now obviously, you know, FCSB, I think is maybe 
thrusting you guys into more of the um, business, the business side, side of it, right? Yeah. Of, 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 of the business, right? Because, you know, just so everyone is aware, FCSB is more of like an incubator. So the idea is you guys are, are building out a space, uh, you know, a shared space for uh, people that have, are, are in the science, you know, have lab access and have different things, right? So, so tell, tell everyone, you know, what, what drove you to kind of maybe pull away from the science side um, and to, to more become a facilitator on the business side, like where, because that's a, a, I think, a pretty big shift, right, in, in sort of For sure. what the, the mindset, right? Obviously, you know, you're like debating being a doctor and, you know, and the science side, now all of a sudden, you're sort of like have shifted to this. So how do you see it um, as maybe benefiting greater or, or more people? Or what are, what are your thoughts on that shift from one to sort of the other? Mm -hmm. And will, so you still dabble? Really... will you still dabble in the science potentially? Yeah, oh, definitely. I feel like one part of it is definitely the fact that the science, being a scientist is always going to be there. Like right. I can always go back to research in my mind. I can start, I can always, like, I'd love to do my PhD in five years time, you know, like right. that, okay. that'll that always be there. So it doesn't necessarily feel like I'm never going to do research again. Right. Right. Um, but it is interesting, this the shift, because I've never really pictured it as like a distinctive choice of we're going to we're going to start a business now and I'm not going to do pursue like research anymore. It was just such like a natural transition into right. this is what we're doing now. Like, what do we need to do to support other people like us is, is where the four city Sama all stemmed from. So my right. my little my blip of doing genetics research and private genetics research and trying to commercialize that was came from a recognition that if I wasn't offered the kind of the opportunity at the time that I did, there's no way that there would be resources for me as a founder in like biotech in Canada. Right. There's no way that I would just be able to be like, I want to start a business and this is my plan now. Uh, and yeah, there's like, there's no roadmap. Of, of course, entrepreneurship, there's no roadmap anyways, but there's especially no, no, no like, um, guidance, I would say, or, or resources out there for Canadian from. And I feel like we were just in this mindset of what's the next, Step that we need to do to support more people who want to create just as you can and figure out like what would you need in order to commercialize your product what would right. you need in order to like get your your product from yeah a to b and so the business side of it was i mean most of my experience in industry has been more of like management so it's been managing people Sorry. managing people and managing no worries <laughs> managing people managing projects and so I think like the business side it was just me wanting to put the pieces like the jigsaw pieces together from like a management perspective of like there's this person over here there's this person over here and they're all doing research and how do we how do we make this a collaborative approach type of thing? It, it honestly like I'm I'm now I'm ranting, but it basically no, it's good. was um, the transition into the business world though, like as a whole, is was like terrifying. Okay, I, well that's kind <laughs> of what I don't, I, I'm a scientist. I'm not, I don't have I'm a, no yeah I, that's I, what I you're kind of getting yeah, at. That's, it's it's like, so it's like what well, yeah what I, I mean, have no but you have the passion obviously. I mean you can sense it like in if if I believe if someone goes on a rant they're passionate about it, right? They, they believe in what they're doing. And so um, it's, it's really cool to see, you know, that, you, you know, the, the building of something and kind of that going off, it, which is obviously evident in what you did. Like I said, the, you know, the three years of, of self-education or, or homeschooling, and then obviously the three years going out and sort of just doing things um, and exploring the world um, definitely led to this. So like, from a, like if you're talking to somebody that's sort of in your shoes, that's maybe coming from maybe the, the I won't say science, but maybe more the, the in the business versus sort of working on the business, mm -hmm. right? Like what, what would, like, what would be sort of some advice you might give them? Cause I know you said just before we jumped on that, like every day is sort of a new challenge or maybe those are words I put in your mouth, but it's sort of like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that you've uncovered um, and learned over the past, let's say year, like what would what would be some of the things that you would say to people that are maybe a year behind you, right? Kind of like debating med school right. or do I get into, you know, your own kind of thing, right? Or that in that sort of space, like what mm -hmm. would you, what would you say is kind of advice to them? 
yeah honest like for sure the the best piece of advice I ever got was um one everything is figure outable <laughs> so don't worry you can do it <laughs> don't right? worry if you yeah. don't know it right now you can figure it out in the future so it's it's okay to not know things is probably right. the best that it, like just knowing that you can figure it out is a good mentality to have. The, right. um, and also just, I think the most valuable thing that's been for me, like just jumping into entrepreneurship is recognizing that um, I'm only as smart as the really smart people who are around me. <laughs> so I don't right. have, like there's tons of areas that I don't have expertise in, but if I, the best thing that I've recognized to, that you can do as like a business owner is just to, have a network of people who are a lot smarter than you are <laughs> right? so that they can give you that guidance when you need them. Um, yeah. Because most people, like you said, like they're passionate about their project and, but like, you can't do it by yourself and it's not, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not a one size fits all of you can just start your business. It's you need to take as much advice and criticism and like, let people rip you to shreds. <laughs> like, let you people have tell that you that your skin, business right? sucks. Yeah, yeah like let yeah. you tell you that this idea is awful. Let them tell you how to even change your research. A lot of the time in science, you have this mentality that your research is your baby and you've devoted so much time to it that you can't, um, there's like a sunken, the sunken cost fallacy, I guess, right. right? Where you've put so much time into it. And if someone were to come in and be like, no one's gonna buy this and and your research, like, can you change your research to do something different? They would be like, what? Like, what do you mean? Right, right. <laughs> your ego is so high. You're like, look at this beautiful science that I've created though. But it's um, not applicable so to anybody or whatever. Into it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. such a problem in, in scientific academia and stuff too. It's just like so many researchers are working on projects that they have absolutely no idea what the end product will be. It's just right. like, it's, it's like you're working on some sort of process, but you don't know if the process will actually enable a product at all. So then you create something great, you've published a research paper, but is anyone gonna actually use that? Is anyone gonna take it and do something with it? No right. idea. How, how applicable is it actually to potentially the real world? I think we're having a little bit of internet. I don't know if it's, mm -hmm. I just, I, I was just, I just made my kids turn off the, everything on the, that was what I was doing there. Cause sometimes, our internet if we've got too many laptops going in the mm -hmm. house they're homeschooling by the way i have a junior kindergarten and a grade Ooh. two that are homeschooling because of covid obviously so not not something that we planned or wanted to do but it is what it is right so um they're on recess right now so i've asked them to hopefully our internet will stabilize if, if it's on our end but um, yeah i'm not sure if it's on my end it, either but it's all it's all good it it's i mean zoom is what it is it, it captures at least your voice maybe your your visual freezes a little bit but that's fine um okay so you so obviously yeah so on the scientific side like you said learning as an entrepreneur that you can fit i like the word figure outable i think mm -hmm. you I, I wonder is that like legitimately in the dictionary it should be if it's not I it love that be, one. Fig, was, figure outable. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's definitely the word of the day, figure outable. Um, it's very true, right? Obviously, if, if you have sort of the, you know, I use the thing where there's a will, there's a way, or if if they if they can do it, why can't I? Or, you know, everything can be solved, right? If, if you put the time and effort into it. Um, so that's definitely, you know, being able to sort of see that maybe there's a problem, but then having the optimistic kind of outlook that, you can overcome that problem or that obstacle, you know, in one way, shape or form. Um, that's pretty cool. So yeah, I agree with you on that. So let's, let's talk about some of your problems or what are, I don't want to, yeah, let's talk about your problems. Let's unpack <laughs> here. What's no, but Look like, into my brain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, but what, like, what are, I mean, what are some of the things that you've encountered that um, you've, you've kind of overcome? Like what are some of your wins that you've had? Maybe some of the losses that, Maybe you've had to accept, maybe not accept defeat, but maybe accept that you're not going to go that direction. And, you know, based on the input of others, like you said, you know, the thick skin, you know, chew you up and spit you out kind of thing. What, like, what are, what are some of the things that you've uh, encountered? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of, we, we didn't even know how to put together like a business plan. We didn't even know what a business model canvas was or like a business plan or anything like that. So I feel like everything has become such a milestone that like we're okay. learning, but also doing at the same time. So you're, right. um, and like 
celebrating those milestones often doesn't happen because you're just what's the next right. step but that's also something that I've learned very quickly of this is you need to celebrate the little milestones or you will go crazy enjoy like you will the just journey your mind. there's no there's no light at the end of the tunnel if you're not celebrating any any little things right right um but yeah I think when we also when we first started out like our, our focus of our business was we can create like a, a huge Canadian wide international like research and development arm support startups arm. We had like a whole bunch of different ideas of how we could pursue just like bringing synthetic biology to the masses and like making it making products that are available to people that are that stem from biology in the first place. Um, and refining that vision of getting feedback of saying if you're trying to support startups, then just support startups. Like don't try and do a million things at once. And right. so like we got knocked down a lot along the way. It was, we got so tired of hearing, refine your focus. Like, focus, <laughs> refine right? your focus. focus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like what's the one thing you're you're focused on? Cause at a point in time we had like, there's three pillars to our business and it's R and D and it's also acceleration of startups. And there's also an incubator lab and there's, yeah. So I think that was probably, um, along the way, the biggest kind of us getting shut, shut down and us overcoming and deciding like, where do we really want to position ourselves? Like right. what do startups actually need? Is it, or what can we do from a synthetic biology industry perspective that's right. going to provide value in Canada? And that took a long time. <laughs> I know we've had a few conversations. I think I've mentioned, I, I've been similarly, you know, you have to get that focus, right? And And I agree with you in the whole, having advisors and people that are smart in, in multifaceted right in in areas that they kind of complement what you maybe lack right and they kind of have that skill set and you can kind of complement one another um focus is definitely i can i can attest that's definitely something i think a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with right i think as an entrepreneur if you have you know maybe a different way of thinking about things and you can see things a little differently from others there's going to, there's going to be a lot of different things that you're going to identify of, of ways that you can address maybe those ideas or, or even just the ideas themselves that you could pursue. But yeah, if you pursued all of them, you're, you know, you're going to be, uh, you're going to achieve none of them basically. Right. So. And it um, sucks too. Like that's, that's, it, it, sucks. That's, it does <laughs> suck. It does suck. Right. It's like, I yeah. want to do it all. Yeah. But yeah, I, so I guess, so what, um, so why don't, why don't you give us in, in a nutshell, you mentioned the different pillars, like what is FCSB as it stands right now, you've drilled down into the focus. What it, What is FCSB? I mean, I kind of mentioned it, but I want to hear it sort of in your terms. What What is it that you guys are, are trying to accomplish and where, what is maybe the direction or path that you've chosen? Mm -hmm. So we are now a synthetic biology startup accelerator. So okay. that's our core, that's our baby. That's exactly um, what we're trying to do. And what that means is we're providing startups in a synthetic biology focus or industry. So early, really early stage TRL kind of one to four ideation stage, even startups who have an idea that um, would like to bring it to life. And basically synthetic biology has so much potential that we're like, this is where the people need their support outside of academia. But right. what that looks like in practice is lab space. So you get access to a lab, you get access to seed funding and you get access to the mentors. So not even just mentors, but a comprehensive program. So it's a four right. month program. And when you're in, once you're in, you have two main goals. It's create a, a proof of concept or an MVP depending on where you're at at that point and create a killer pitch. So around what your business is. So that that becomes most scientists have never, like we said before, shifting into the business world is not right. uh, not typical. So most right. scientists don't know anything about business. So the whole point of what FCSB is doing is to give them some support in the business, um, in the business realm of things from that program perspective. Right. Cool. So yeah, and then and I mean, obviously, we're working with you guys with backers to to facilitate funding both for you guys and then potentially funding for the uh, for the companies within the accelerator, right? Um, so tell tell us. I mean, I think if someone watches just this video, I want them to understand what synthetic biology is um, mm -hmm. and 
how it's applicable and maybe the shift. I know with Samir, we talked a little bit about sort of the shift from the old world thinking of like GMOs and maybe what happened 20 years ago or 10 years ago and maybe the shift towards what synthetic biology is and where it can go. I know you've talked a little bit about your experience in pharma, but I think you guys are more um, a, a sort of the agricultural side, the agro side. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what that is? What is what is synthetic biology in in your your definition of synthetic biology? I guess. Yeah, I like to call it um, genetic engineering on steroids. Okay. <laughs> For people who don't know what synthetic biology is, it's very much it's it's based in a lot of genetic engineering principles, but it's there's a, a twist to it because you're actually applying these principles and trying to do something useful with it. So right. I like to kind of define it as your, um, your engineering biology and living systems to create a solution. So to solve a problem, I guess is a better way. So your engineering biology, Oh, it is my internet. Sorry, can you hear me? I just yeah, got a I little note saying your internet no, connection can, is unstable. So it's definitely my you. end. <laughs> it's okay. I can hear you. Okay. It's okay. You, you, yeah, I mean, your, so your, your, your video sort of freezes, but your audio is, is, is still flowing along. Oh, it's going to look great on YouTube. You're good <laughs> now. No, it's, it's fine. You're, you're, it's only sporadic. So it's all good. It's all good. So, so just to sort of get into the synthetic side. So you're actually creating from nothing, right? That's sort of the idea you're, you're, I mean, we talked, uh, I don't want to get too much over people's heads with science and stuff, but basically you're creating um, a solution to a problem using genetics and biology. And, and then the synthetic side is sort of, you know, kind of like almost like the 3D printing of the biology, right? The, the biological components, right? To, to create new organisms almost, right? Or ver versions of those or yeah. variations, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you're manipulating life is what right. you do. Like, and I think that's what's scary for a lot of people. Is Very that much so, right? Yeah, and when, I mean, that's a whole other conversation of ethics and stuff like that. <laughs> but, um, do you guys bring that into your accelerator at all? Is there ethics? And do you bring the ethical side into the accelerator? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? You okay. have to have policy regulations. Basically, okay. yeah, there's there's so much to do with regulations surrounding genetically modified organisms. Right. So, um, but yeah, the it all revolves around, it comes down to DNA and being right. able to edit DNA. So if you can take the genes out of something and put them and recreate them or give them a new characteristic yeah. or a new trait of whatever you're, whatever right. you're trying to create right. um, that is useful for solving a certain problem, like that's what synthetic biology is to me. Right. It's you're taking DNA, you're manipulating it and you're- Solving a problem. Solving a problem, yeah. Right. I was joking, you know, larger red tomatoes, right? Juicier, but that's not, that's probably like a very simplistic version of it, but there's yeah, a lot more so many to people, it. So many people think about synthetic biology in like a, a GMO term too. So right. it's like, oh, you're, it, it just becomes, you're creating like crop resistance or you're right. creating like that are purple or yeah. something like that. But there's what's way cool more and what a it. lot of people really don't understand yeah, what people don't understand about synthetic biology is that it is a tool that is much larger than just adding one. I know I said characteristic or trait, but like right. you can take genes, you can take DNA out of a cow and put it in a test tube and replicate or add new traits to it that you that you want. Like just the single DNA. This is like trying to keep it really high level here. <laughs> put it in a test tube shake it up and add your traits and do your do your your magic and create meat that is identical to a cow under a microscope that right. never actually resulted in slaughtering a cow <laughs> right right um, interesting so you're yeah so you're literally like that's the that's sort of like the 3d printer component right you're like printing meat almost mm -hmm. and, and yeah. not even i mean i'm oversimplifying it but yeah that's that's pretty interesting so Entrepreneurs come to you or, or obviously scientists that aren't really entrepreneurs come to you with an idea. You go through sort of a vetting process. There's the incubator accelerator where you've got the lab, the space, you're providing them with the, you know, essentially the, the space to physically work in and the, the technology or the lab or the equipment, I guess, to 
to pursue whatever it is they're trying to pursue. And then, you know, the, the funding stuff, you know, we talked to, and then you kind of get them out into the market or go to market. Like what, what is, what is kind of the strategy? Like how does that look um, for a, a potential? So let's, let's sort of talk to the world who are, might be investors, who might be potential people that are looking to pursue the fields. What, what is sort of the process that they'll, either of those people will watch or go through um, as, a, as either the, you know, the scientist or say the investor, like what is that process that they can expect to see through FCSB and, and, and timelines and, and different things and where, where does that go? Yeah, so from a startup's perspective, like the four months is really just the beginning, I would okay. say. So you, you get accepted, you have your idea, you get accepted, you go through this four month program. And at the end of the program, like, yes, the goal is to come out with a proof of concept MVP, right. but we also, we're invested in you, right? Like we're investing in you. So yeah. we want to explain see that a little bit more. That's probably an interesting. Yeah. Part so the program, the program is 250 K right now. So each startup that goes into a program gets 250 K for 10 to 15% equity. So that's what, um, by doing that, we're in it for the long haul. Like, right. obviously we want to see your startup succeed. Exactly. Um, so at the end, and a lot of our program, it doesn't end at the program either. Like we have partners who are scale up. We have partners who are um, downstream processing. That is a lot, like science takes a long time to develop a product. Right. So you're right. not going to expect, even from like an investment side, you're not going to put in, see this program for four months and expect by the end of the program, I'm going to, they're going to have a product. And product on the trend. shelf? There, yeah, there's not going to be a product on the shelf that's going to market kind yeah, of thing in four months? Not. No? Okay. <laughs> definitely not. No? Definitely right, not. It's not, right. uh, it's not like tech where you can just like code something and have a product the next day or right. in a week type of thing. Like science and biology is complex and experiments take time. So it ends up being like, two to five to 10 years before right. you actually bring a product to the market in the biotech world. Um, so during that time, it's it's consistent for us to stay as, I would say, heavily involved as obviously as much as the startups are are, are comfortable with, that like that's a whole um, decision based off of what the founders would like, but the program itself, it's four months, and then you can stay in our lab facility for up to 19 months after that okay. just to continue working on your product okay and at that point you're still i mean you're an alumni at that point so we have the network we have still the introductions to investors we have people who are interested in your um seeing your company grow as well so yeah i did i guess i didn't really yeah no, firm that, makes, or anything like no, that. no that, that makes sense that yeah. makes sense so so just i out of curiosity just i mean i, I kind of thought came up to me if so obviously you said two to five, maybe even 10 years is sort of like, if, if he even gets to that point, obviously. Um, but then sort of the 19 months, so you've got four and, and 19. So what, where would a company go sort of after that 19 months? Are they expected to kind of be out on their own, maybe in their own space? Or I just wonder what, like what 19 seems like sort of a, an, in my opinion, arbitrary number, but like what, maybe what, got you to the 19 months or where, where does that kind of come fit in, right? What are the expectations after that 19 month period? Mm -hmm. And the 19 months is probably, I mean, it's not stringent, it's flexible as well. I wouldn't right. say okay. it, it was the number got created based off of our capacity. So if we're bringing in cohorts right. and there's alumni at some point, you got to kick somebody you gotta, out. Somebody's got to go <laughs> on the, the other end, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what um, is so the expectation then? Where, where do they go after that? I mean, ideally, they they don't have to stay for that long. Like, you will grow faster okay. than than um, nineteen months, and you'll we want you to outgrow our space, right? Like, right. we want okay. you to, to become a, a larger company and be successful. So they so would have their own space company. potentially. Is that the idea? They get out into their own. Space? Yeah. So yeah. the okay. idea is is we'll, we're willing to house you for as long as you need until you're ready to step up on your step up out on your own and potentially like have your own HQ or okay. collaborate with a. Um, university yeah, like, or wherever yeah exactly okay interesting so would they go back because i think that was one of the things that i know we didn't talk about here but i think i've heard you talk about it and, and samir um that the university realm and this is kind of what the sort of the value that you guys bring or or the i don't know the the why you would exist versus just kind of the traditional like utilizing within a university setting is sort of the autonomy that the company would have by going through you and then going back to the university 
would they be losing that or would there be now that they're larger and more established they wouldn't have to give up so much mm -hmm. or like what's the I think what I might happens have, there i think i might have misinterpreted what you said before maybe like not uh because I don't think any of our startups are going back to academia. Okay, okay. So that's okay. So then I. Oh, I sorry. I, yeah. I, yeah. No worries. There's okay, no so, way you're you're working backwards at that point. Yeah. Okay. That's that's what I just was thinking there out loud. But okay. So then they're on their own. So that's cool. So now they're on. So as an investor in FCSB, um, somebody who comes to F FCSB um, to invest or investing in these businesses, they're obviously investing in the future potential of the technology, and then obviously by investing in FCSB. They're investing in all of the future technologies of all of the organizations potentially or, or entities or you know technology i guess what would you call them technologies or or breakthroughs or yeah something all of the above, all of the above? <laughs> yeah, yeah so they they would go through those cool well i, I don't want to keep, take too much of your time shay i really appreciate you joining me um i have a couple a couple of things so where can they find you guys where where what's your where can they find you? LinkedIn, social media. Yeah. Where can they find you or FCSB? Um, yeah, I don't know, you, can, throw... you can definitely f find us on LinkedIn at f like just Four City Symbio or a website that is pretty simple, just fcsb.ca. Okay. So that's simple as well. Um, Perfect. Also, once we have our backers page up and running, you'll be able to go to backers to find us too. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Exactly. Which will, which hopefully will be sooner rather than later. Um, so. I usually end it with kind of a, a bit of a choose your own adventure. Um, we, I think we already have the one word though, right? It was, um, remind me, what was it? Figure outable. Uh, figure outable. Yeah. But I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to, to, instead of choosing one word that you would say piece of advice. Um, if, if there, if you were falling off a cliff and there was sort of last words you could say to the people that you love or whoever, what would those words be? Usually it's picked between one word or falling off a cliff, but it's 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 sort of morbid, but oh it is gosh. what it is. What would what would that what would be what would be your final words to people? Oh my goodness, that's a hard question. It is a hard <laughs> question. I, I not to throw you under the bus. I apologize, but oh my goodness, you already what's, gave us your one word. It was figure outable, but it's yeah. usually your, what's what's the joke around that like delete my browser history or something like that <laughs> life's complicated like delete my browser history <laughs> uh delete is that what you um, delete? It's, it's probably not it but no it would probably be don't forget everything's figure outable we'll leave don't it at forget, that. <laughs> yeah okay cool i like it i like it well um shay i really appreciate you joining me here everyone else uh fcsb.ca and like I said coming soon on uh, the backers platform will we'll have your offering coming soon. Um, I said we're working on that. So Shay, I appreciate it. Any anything else you wanted to say to anyone? Anything? Oh, this is this has been awesome. It's great to it's great to talk to you. And if anybody's watching this and wants to reach out, we're always we're always happy to talk. Perfect. And just for the record, right? FCSB for a city is London, London, Ontario. Yeah. So you yeah, are in London, London, Ontario. Just to just to clarify, London FCSB. I didn't know for a city was London until actually I met you guys, but um, now I know something you learn every day, right? So cool. Everyone else, um, Shay, thank you again very much. Everyone else, this is One Take powered by backers, Justin Fox, Shay Tough, couple Scarborough kids mm -hmm. in the house, right? Um, anyways, have a great day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Awesome, thanks. Hold on, let's see, where did I get our... Hey there, welcome to One Take. Powered by backers. Right? No, 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 no judging. Yeah. No judging. The millennials are really changing that. That uh, is charm. No. <laughs> All success begins with desire. I feel like I'm on fire right now. OMG, baby.